The real estate world is changing. Opportunity is everywhere. It has never been so easy to connect, share, and bring people together. We're learning from others and finding the very best in ourselves. Challenging our beliefs, overcoming our fears, transforming ourselves so we can transform our business. This is Investor Creator. All right, guys, appreciate you guys being with us. We got some more people jumping in the room here. We'll let them in. Uh, This is part two in a three-part series of goal setting for 2021. To recap last night, the first thing we did, we went over our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats, really to gain an understanding and to, to gain a foundation of where we are in our business. Okay, so we're, we're kind of trying to identify, bring it on paper so that it becomes a little bit more finite. And I've found that for me, that it's really been helpful for me to do these kinds of things because it's like you have all these ideas in your head all the time. And whenever you get to paper, it, it becomes organized, even if it's not, you know, so it really helps me in terms of really not having to think about these things all the time and getting it on paper to, to analyze things, right? Second th- thing we did, we talked about our standards. So we're talking about, we always meet our lowest standards. We may not meet our goals, but we're always going to meet our lowest standards. And so figuring out what those standards are for you in both in your business life and in your personal life, right? And so I asked you guys to write out what you felt like your standards were for your business life and your personal life so that we can begin to say, okay, like, can we take some time and raise some of these standards or add new standards into our life, right? Uh, and the third thing that we did was was talk about paid price to action. So there's no free lunch and this is no different. So with every goal that we want to accomplish, we've got to pay the price. And so, you know, fitness is a good example of this. You know, if you want to lose 20 pounds, you can't go and, and have that the, that cocktail binge on Friday night with your friends. You can't go and, and, you know, I love tacos. I even love tacos so much that I have socks that have tacos on. Uh, that's going to be a problem. You know what I mean? So uh, we have some, some things that we have to uh, give up to gain on the back end, right? And, and that's with everything. You know, it's, it's the basics of success are short-term sacrifice for long-term gain, right? So what are you willing to give up in your life to meet the goals that you feel like you have to meet? And then at that point, we begin to have a foundation to build from. So, I mean, it's very similar to building a house or any kind of construction. We want to have a solid foundation to build from. And kind of like I said, for those that were not, um, <laughs> Carl said, got to have my Taco Bell. I'm into that. So <laughs> for the, the people that, uh, that weren't here the other night, you know, we were talking about how so many people that set goals fail because, in my opinion, they don't do the pre-work that's necessary to have a decent goal. You know, they just think about, well, what do I want? And they write that down on the paper. They end up losing the piece of paper three weeks later. And so they, they don't even have, a, most people halfway through the year, they don't even remember what their goals were. And so we're doing the pre-work now to begin to, tonight, start thinking about in specifics, what our goals could be so that tomorrow night, we can really hammer things down yeah. and, and have a, a good goal and a good plan moving forward into the new year. But we had to lay the foundation, right? And, and that's what last night was about, was laying the foundation so that we can become serious about where we are in our situation, <laughs> what are we willing to give up, and then also figuring out what are the standards that we have for ourselves. So mm-hmm. let me ask you guys, what could possibly F this up? <laughs> right? We have everything that we need, right? What could possibly have this up? And so what I would submit to you is that we, we're going to have obstacles. We're going to have obstacles in the next year. Otherwise, everything would be easy. And what I would also submit to you is that the biggest obstacle is going to be ourselves. You know, the times that I've looked back on the problems that I've made for myself, even if it was business related, I've always realized that it was because I didn't do what I should have done or I did what I shouldn't have done. Right. And so I, I think we can all agree that if we realize that meeting our goals and meeting our potential is 100 percent up to us, it, it's a double edged sword because on one side, it's very empowering. OK, and it's, it's very free because we realize it's really up to us. But on the other side, it's, it's very scary because we can't blame anything, anything else. Like we can't blame the market. We can't blame our family. We can't blame anything other than ourselves at the end of the day. 
Okay. So Tony's going to take us through some, some exercises that we can do to really identify, okay, if the biggest obstacle is me, then what can I do to fix what's in between my ears so that we can go out there and, and have the right mindset moving forward? Okay. So Tony, how does this work? Well, I mean, it is true that there from time to time are things that happen to us that we didn't plan. We didn't see it coming. And those kind of things are going to happen. But the great majority of them, as Brad said, are not going to be that way. The great majority of them are going to be things that when we look back at them, we had an opportunity before they took place to plan. We had an opportunity to prepare. So that's what we want to focus on. The great majority of things that we have an opportunity to prepare for. Okay. So this is not a real exciting part of it. Preparation never is. You look at people who are great achievers and they're going to be honest and tell you that, that the power is in the process and the details. It's really not in the exciting stuff. Every now and then, you know, you have a miracle come along. But if your whole life, if all your goals are dependent upon miracles, then we probably are more lazy then we are anything, you know, we're waiting to get, get bailed out of something. So what we want to talk about tonight for a little bit is how we can prep to get ready for most of the stuff we're going to encounter. So I really believe, and, and obviously I've done a lot of reading. So most of my good stuff I've gotten from other people. And truth is most of our good stuff for all of us, we've gotten from other people. I really believe that Instead of being led by good goals that we have set for us out in front of us, I find that in my life and in in most people that I deal with as a coach, that we're driven more by our subconscious beliefs about ourselves that we're not aware of most of the time. Even though we're aware of what the work we have in front of us, we're very aware of that. We find ourselves, instead of being led by our goals, we're being driven by subconscious beliefs we have about ourselves that limit us. They don't have to limit us. They could be subconscious beliefs that we've spent enough time thinking about and preparing with that they are leading us, partnering with our goals to lead us into a new and bigger and higher place. But unfortunately, we leave those things alone. I still do it. Although I know what I'm about to tell you, like the back of my hand, I still don't prepare enough for uh, the future. And so let's talk about that. And it's kind of three steps. So the first one is I want you, I, I want you to know that I know that, that most of you have some kind of system that you use. You have read a book. They've got a goal setting system. You may have a coach a business coach that helps you through this process. So what I'm about to tell you, the number one is really not that that big of a deal, but as far as uh, how you got it, but it is a big deal if you don't have a system that's laid out how it covers your entire life. So I use a system that I that's called seven streams of life. And basically I have set out to where I want to know what I believe, the truth about what I believe in my subconscious being, because whatever I believe in my subconscious being is going to is going to affect my conscious reality. So I want to know what I believe about for me these seven things. Uh, the first one is I call it presence, but basically is what I believe about me. What is the truth about what I believe about me? The second one is people, and that is uh, the, my relationships. Brad hit on this last night. It can be your wife. It can be a significant other. It can be children. It can be a business partner. It can be people that work for you. It can be people you work for. And I know you think if you're an entrepreneur, you might not work for anybody. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're using private lenders, you are working for people. That's right. At that point, it has flipped and they are the head and you've become the tail. So relationships are so important. That's the second one. The third one is purpose. What is it that you are sure of is that that your purpose in this life? Because one day as you get older, things 
that take on new meaning. And things that used to be important to you aren't as important anymore. So purpose. Fourth is wealth. How to manage your money. What you believe about yourself and wealth is so important. The sixth one is hobbies. Uh, you better have something else to do other than this. You better, it, it, I don't care if it's hiking trails, if you got a greenway in the community you live in, if you live on the uh, Cumberland Plateau or in East Tennessee and you're not in the mountains, you're not outside sometime, uh, you're missing a great opportunity. You need to have a hobby. And the last one is how you want to finish. Maybe this is just because I've just turned 60, but how you finish is very important to you. We live forever. We're only breathing for a short period of time. But after we're gone, we're still living in the minds of our children, our grandchildren, friends, people that that uh, associates we were in business with. So how you want to finish? So why is that important? Well, that's the way that I've kind of laid out the grid of my life. Now, what we're about to do next is needs to be done in all. For me, I do it in all seven areas of my life. And so uh, the first one is what I call belief busters. So I want you to get just so you can get a pen, a regular piece of paper. Doesn't matter how it is. And we're going to actually do a little writing for just a second here. And you say, well, this is not my this is not my best thing that I do. I'm really better at. See, that's the problem. We spend too much time on the stuff that we're already good at. Like I guarantee you, the thing I the thing I'm always most impressed about business wise about Brad is his understanding of how money works. There are a lot of rich people who got rich never knowing how money worked. If they had known what to do with the cash that they had, they could not imagine the wealth that they would have. But he's done the hard work of learning how money works. And that's totally different from having money. So I call this belief busters. I'm going to bring up two right here, and this will give you an idea of um, of how we do this. One is I want you to take a piece of paper, and I'll can they see me right now? Yeah, go ahead. I want you to draw a line right down the middle, and on this side, I'm going to tell you what to write on the left side of your page. And so I want you to write this one down right now. This has to do with a relationship. And the reason it's important is this took place for me about five years ago. Write this down verbatim. I am emotionally healthy, comma, ready for the best relationship ever. Now, you don't have to be single right now. This had to do with me. I had been single for 20 years for a long time. And so I was ready to be married. So in my belief buster on this side of my page, I wrote that down. I am healthy, emotionally, and ready for the best relationship ever. Now, here's what I want you to do on the right side of your page. I want you to start writing that sentence down one right after another, the same sentence over and over and over and over again until you have the first thought that comes to you. Don't care what that thought is. Whatever that thought is, I want you to write it down across from this on the right side of your page. What's going to happen is, as you begin to state what you believe the truth, what you really want the truth about you to be, every time it's like driving a nail into a piece of wood, it's going to go deeper every time. And before long, you're going to have a thought that's going to come out of nowhere. So I'm going to tell you what happened when the first time someone led led me through this. I probably wrote this down nine or 10 times, maybe 11. And all of a sudden, out of, out of nowhere, this thought came. You are not ready. You have effed up every relationship you have been in. That's what came to me. And I was like, what? And, and so he said, you look like you've just had a thought. I said, well, I did. So I wrote it down exactly like I had it over here. He said, okay, now go back to writing the truth about you again. I am emotionally healthy and ready for the best relationship ever. I started writing it again over and over and over again. And then I had the thought again. 
you idiot. You are not emotionally ready. You have never been emotionally ready for a relationship. So I wrote that down again. You idiot over here. You're not ready. You see, there's a difference between the subconscious beliefs about me that I have that seldom rare, uh, they seldom stick their head up out of the ground. And what I really want to be true, like my goal over here. So goals need to be with such, they need to start with I am the words I am or I have, not I want. They need to start with what you, but if this were true and I really believed this, these ugly thoughts about me would have never come out. This is what I want to be true about me. This is the truth about what I believe about me. And as long as we leave this stuff underneath the surface, guess what? This is what we're going to manifest. Every time we start to get close to what we really want, we'll start manifesting this. So here's the next one, Healy. We're going to go to another belief buster. He said, write this down. So what I want you to do is I want you to write this down over here on the left side of your page. Okay. Here's what it says. I have more money than I could ever spend. I have more money than I could ever spend. So I started writing that down one right after another on, I mean, I, I'm two pages into writing down. I have more money than I could ever spend. And then I had a thought. No, you do not. You have blown every bit of money that you have ever gotten. You don't understand how money works. You are stupid about money. That's the thoughts I had. You're actually stupid about money. Your friends are a lot smarter than you about money. And so I had to write that down over here on this side. Then I went back to writing this again. I have more money than I could ever spend. So I write it. I don't know how many times I wrote it again, but here it comes again. It was like a laughing, mocking thing that I thought. Wow. I was laughing at myself because I was taking part in what seemed like a stupid idea that this guy who has three doctorates in mindset and psychology is leading me through. And of course, I'm smarter than him. I can figure out a way to do this better than him. And so <clears throat> every day then, I started doing this practice. I'm going to be honest with you. It took me like, I don't know, 22, 23, 24 days before I started having some kind of a breakthrough, before I could write these down for 15, 20 times without having these horrible thoughts pop into my mind about me. And you say, you know, I mean, this sounds like some kind of psycho babble BS, and that's fine. If that's what you'd like uh, to, to come to the conclusion, that's fine. I'm sure what you got is working for you. Stick with it. <laughs> Stick with it. There are other good ways to do it. This is just a way that helped me, uh, these belief busters. So what I do is every year I sit down uh, starting in about mid-November and I start looking at my next year. But I don't look at my next year the way I used to now. Instead of looking at my next year first, I look inside of me. Being prepared for my next year's goals means that I don't have these subconscious thoughts and beliefs about myself that I'm a failure. I mean, it, I can run towards these goals as hard as I want to. I can make all kinds of plans that I want to and be crippled by one thought, one thought about myself that I, I cannot do that. It'll hold me back. Now, what that does is the belief busters, they start revealing to you what your fears are. So this list over here on the right side is a, basically a list of your subconscious fears. You're wrong. You're stinking thinking about yourself. And that's so important to have. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to be honest with you. It is more important to know what you think about yourself that's not true than it is to know the truth right now because the truth will just fly like a bird. 
I mean, what you believe about yourself that's good, you don't have to talk to it. It'll just take off and go. But what you're thinking about yourself that is a limiting thought, that's a limiting belief, that will keep your dreams and your goals stunted. So I go through this every day for probably about, I don't know, three, four weeks. Sometimes I have to miss a day. Sometimes uh, this old fellow over here, he works me hard. And sometimes we miss, we miss, I miss a day or two, but you stay on it because you want to know what is it I'm believing about myself that's not true. These belief, I have a belief buster I write down for each of those seven areas. I, you know, one of them is I'm healthy and ready for a great relationship. Well, after I got married, I changed that now. And I say I am healthy and I'm ready for the best day with my wife that I've ever had. I'll also say that when I have a, a family member who I'm struggling with, it, it could be an adult child, it could be um, grandkids, it could be whatever it is, a friend, it could be a close friend. This is a way to blow the cover of the fears that are alive on the inside of you that you're not even aware of. Now, here's one more thing that's powerful. Once you write down what those fears are, they're going to affect these different areas of your life. I recommend that you find a way to challenge them. So, so let, let's do this. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> We're kind of doing this improv at this point. Yeah. There is an affirmation that I've had for a long, long time. And it's, I'm a powerful real estate investor and my success is assured. I'm a powerful real estate investor <laughs> and my success is assured. And I've done this for probably 10 years. Right. So, I mean, I, when I'm riding in my car, sometimes I'm just thinking in my head, a powerful real, and I don't know why it is powerful that, because I always felt like whenever I was in front of the seller, I had to be the power holder. You know, mm -hmm. whenever I'm negotiating, I had to be the power holder. And so that's just the, the word that resonated with me. I didn't really like it for a long time, but then it, it got to, I got to be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. So let's go through this with that. With that. And, and see how that's going to work. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the chat, guys. We're going to spend about 15, about five minutes. Oh, no. However long it takes. Okay. So five to 10 minutes. And so, again, you're going to take, I'm going to put it in the chat. You're going to write it out as many times as you can. And on one side of the paper, and as you, you have thoughts, we'll go to the other side. And then we'll come off of mute and kind of talk about the garbage belief systems that, that come up. Because everybody struggles with this. Yeah. And, and I think that this is going to be fun. This yeah, is this will be good. good. All right, we're going to go on mute. I'm going to put the, the mantra in the chat and we'll get started. All right, guys, we're ready to rock and roll with this. So who had something come to mind? I'm sure most did. Who would like to share something? I can share something, Brad. Go ahead. Uh, it's actually Henry. It's a moment wife. So that's why it says joy. Yeah, that's cool. Um, <laughs> uh, there's, a couple, there's two things that came to mind, uh, both kind of quick, actually. But the first one was uh, there's no assurances in life. Nothing is guaranteed. And then... Okay. The second one was, I am a powerful real estate investor, and my success is assured. Yeah, but only if I do the work. Okay. Okay. The second one, I think, is not necessarily a bad thing, but right. really interesting thoughts. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that, Tom? No, I mean, what you want to do is you want to write and write and write and write and write this thing until your hand is tired, until you, don't know, you no longer have any kind of thoughts that come out. Is it true that... Uh, yeah, but you got to do the work. Yes, we all have to do the work. It doesn't matter what we're doing. But usually what happens when we're writing a statement down that's as powerful as this, and we're thinking through a statement that is as strong as this, just about anything that comes out has the potential to be some kind of excuse too, so that it's a way out. Well, I must not have done the work. Not always, but has the potential to be. So when I get something like that, I write it on the right side. Like I got into the fourth one and I wrote, the thought I had was afraid of what people think about me. You know, I'm a powerful real estate investor and my success is assured. I'm afraid of what people think about me. I don't know where that came from, but it's in there. And this statement smoked it out. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah, whenever I started doing this, for me, and again, 10 years ago, I had the worst thoughts. I mean, it was like powerful. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, you're not powerful at anything. You know, like you, you can barely go in and, and 
buy a house. Like you, you don't really know what's going on with things and you know, you're out of control, you know? And, and so it began to show me some things that I, I had to work on. So really appreciate you sharing, man. By the way, this is what mine looks like. I'm writing a statement on the side and I write my thoughts down on the other side. And sometimes I'll go four, five, six pages. Yeah. Yeah. To, to get this stuff out. Keith had one, but how long is it going to take? He, he showed in the, the chat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what do people do whenever they, they have these negative things? Because what, what we're going to recommend and part of the homework is that you come up with three or four statements that you feel should be positive about you and your business mm-hmm. that you do this for and you're be- going to begin to identify some of the limiting beliefs that you have. Okay, so four statements, homework. So what does someone do once they identify that maybe there's a trend or there's just something that that they see that continues to pop up? I do recommend that when you see one like I did all seven of those areas that I told you about, I do that once a year. And when I see one or two areas that I just have negative stuff popping up about myself all the time or excuses popping up or whatever, then I'll get on those every month and I'll usually spend like towards the last week of every month. I'll take a day and, uh, and I'll, I'll set aside an hour or two to really dig into those two. And, uh, if I know that those are things that have been repetitive in my life, then I look for a way to challenge those. So I'll give you an example of that would be, I wanted to, as, as one of my goals, I wanted to start doing some corporate speaking again. I had done quite a bit of consulting work and speaking in the hospital uh, sector and uh, all kinds of health care. And um, so I wanted to start doing that again. But I was in my, my late 50s when I had that thought. And I'll be honest with you, I forget a few things from time to time. And I started getting worried about my memory. Because things have changed in speaking so much. You, you, now you've got to have PowerPoint. You've got to be able to stand up and just get after it, which I'm fine in front of thousands of people. It's just that all the technical stuff got to. Mm-hmm. So I said, what am I going to do to get rid of that fear that I've got? I'm going to put myself in a position this next year to where I have to speak publicly without any notes. So I thought about ways to do that. And one of the ways I thought about an idea was I'm going to be in a play. Well, I'd never even been to a play. I've never been to a play in my life. Maybe I went when I was a kid, I was a pumpkin in some first grade play, but I'd never been to the theater and been to a play. So I decided I was going to be in one, which I didn't know the first thing about it. So I called a friend of mine, Kristen Swan. And I said, Kristen, I want to be in a play next year. And she kind of chuckled and, And I said, how do I do that? And she said, I don't know. I've never been in a play either. But I have a friend who is um, an acting coach. She's an actress and an acting coach. One of the other things that also was a a struggle for me was I was tired of being alone. And for the first time, I was thinking about wanting to meet somebody Mm -hmm. that might be a partner for life. And so both of those things were on my list. But anyway, Kristen said, you know, here, here's this person that I think you should call. She can tell you how to be in a play. So I sent her an email and I said, my name's Tony Woodall. I'd like to be in a play this next year. I don't know anything about it. Never even been to a play. Could you give me some direction? And she said, I'm really busy right now. I can't, I don't have time for coffee. That's what I said. I'd, I'd buy you a cup of coffee if you would sit down for a few minutes. She said, I don't have time for that right now. Well, that's good frame and social value. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she said, uh, she said, if you'll give me your um, if you'll give me your phone number, whatever, I'll get back in touch with you. In about three weeks, I might have some time. Well, three weeks came up. I got an email from her and she said, I can meet with you Wednesday at 1 30. It's like that's a you know, her only shot. <laughs> and so we met at Jazora Coffee House here in Murfreesboro. And she told me some things I needed to do. She said, you need to go read. I wound up getting a part in this play called Lend Me a Tenor. I had no idea. You know, I told the guy, just make me a telephone. I'm six, eight. So I said, make me a telephone pole or something, you know, I can stand around and, and not have a lot to say. But uh, I wound up 
uh, getting a lead part in this play. And uh, it went great. And it did. It challenged my fear. I had to memorize all those lines. And it was a way that I could overcome those subconscious fears I had about myself. Not only that, that acting coach that I met that day who wouldn't meet with me for three weeks is now my wife. So out of those two fears, one of them led to me overcoming both of them there. And so I want to challenge you to get aggressive about finding out what subconsciously you believe about yourself and your ability to do this. Because I know when I started this with Brad, I was kind of his first apprentice. And when I started doing this, I would listen to him talk and I would, on my way home, I'd be, well, that that's the biggest bunch of psycho babble bullshit I've ever heard in my life. That is not going to work. Nobody is going to, nobody is going to just sell me their house. And then it started happening and it started challenging my beliefs. What I really believed, which I seldom talk about out loud. And so mindset is so important. And if we don't win the battle of what we believe about ourselves and what we're doing, we will not win the battle of having someone ask us to buy their home, give us their mortgage to take over, ask us would they give them $1,500 at closing so they move to their next apartment, and hand us $60,000 in equity. That stuff doesn't just happen. It can, but we need to correct what we believe about ourselves and what we're doing so that we're ready to, we're prepared to let that happen. Instead of trying to take it from them, they're trying to give it to us. The second we start trying to take it from them, the leverage has shifted and we're no longer in the lead. If that makes sense. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. And you know, I see so often that if people have these bad belief systems about themselves and it's something that I think most people struggle with, you know, if we don't actively work on it, then we're struggling with it. And so if you have these bad belief systems about yourself then you're going to have a tough time feeling like you're worthy, feeling like I can accomplish something, feeling like you're not doing a disservice to someone else, you know, which you hit on. If you don't believe in what you're doing, it doesn't matter how you do it. You know what I mean? Like that's a big thing. So a hundred percent, man. So what you're saying is whenever you have these belief systems pop up to come up with an active plan on getting out of your comfort zone to challenge these, these kinds of things. We only overcome what we're afraid of by facing it. So whatever those things are, if you get nervous about talking to someone, when you show up at their home, Mm -hmm. then put yourself in a position to where you're going to, and, a, and an easy way, I have a good friend, Angela Brock. She was my secretary, and I probably didn't hear her say 10 words the first six months she worked for me. She was scared to death to talk to people because she did, was she was afraid that what she would say was not smart, she said. Mm. So when she took a course that I did on this, she decided to join Toastmasters. Okay, yeah. And she was forced to get up and talk in front of total strangers. Well, now you can't shut her up. Well, I guess it's kind of like, you know, if you feel like you're afraid of heights and you go skydiving every weekend for a month. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, that's People that I, do that aren't, aren't afraid of heights, you know. Very cool. So um, homework, come up with four things that you feel you should believe about yourself in terms of your business and your business. Do the belief buster, see what comes up. And we're going to talk about that next time. So switching gears for just a moment, and we're kind of coming to the end. I know we're approaching an hour. I want to kind of switch gears and talk about playing to win versus playing not to lose. Mm. And I think that there are some, certainly some people in the group that I, I can definitely say are playing to win. And I would say that there's a, a significant uh, amount of people in the group that are, are playing not to lose. And I I want you to take some time between now and tomorrow night and decide which side of that coin you're on, okay? Here's a couple of of litmus tests to decide 
if you're playing to win versus playing not to lose. The biggest one that I can think of is in terms of marketing, if you still look at marketing as a cost and you're afraid to begin your marketing or invest in your marketing, then I would suggest to you that you're playing to not lose versus playing to win. Okay. I feel like marketing is the absolute best form of spin that we can possibly have in our business. And it turns into to just everything good that we could possibly have. Okay. It turns into cash flow, it turns into equity, it turns into cash, it turns into transactions, which, you know, for the people that are just starting, you know, your first five transactions, you're going to feel like a different investor after deal number five, deal number 15, than you do at deal number zero and one. You know, I certainly did somewhere between, and I tell this all the time, somewhere between deal number three and deal number 12, I decided I wasn't just lucky that there is something <laughs> to this, you know, like the, the first yeah. deal I thought well, I was just lucky. They, they would have sold to anybody and they would have, cause I was terrible at this <laughs> deal. Number two and three was pretty much the same thing, but I had a little bit of confidence, but between deal number three and 12, I thought, well, you know, maybe this does work as a business, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Cause I still didn't believe, you know, and I think all the time about how much that that really just slowed me down. Okay. So think about if you're playing to win or playing to not lose. And, and there's just a huge difference. I mean, what do you see in terms of people in life playing to not lose versus playing to win? Well, I mean, for instance, just take the script. Yeah. I mean, the script, think about everything about, I don't know what your stuff you like is, is, but what if it's sports? What if it's your favorite sports team? Think about everything you know about that sport, about that team, about those players, the stats, what their record is, who they're playing next Sunday, and we don't know the script yet. Man, that's deep. Or think about this when it comes to marketing. We may have a $700 a month car payment. It'd be better if we drove a POS up to buy these houses and took the money we on that, you know, $400 of that $700 car payment and put it into marketing. Yeah. I mean, we, it, we have to let this thing realign our priorities. Yeah. And that's paid price action, man. Like what are you willing to give up? And that's fear too. That is, yeah. uh, it's just easier for me to go and pay, you know, 11% on a car note that for $700 a month, that's a lot easier for me than it is to hand, to spend that money on marketing and wait for that phone to ring. And take the risk that and, maybe I'm not good enough. Right. But the real risk is the fact that we're putting $700 a month at 11% interest in a car note. That thing is depreciating so fast. We can't even get it out of the parking lot of the car lot yeah. before it's worth less than what it is. So it, it's really the better risk is the marketing. 100%. One deal can pay your marketing for a year. Or more. Yeah. Or One more. deal. I say that all the time. Guys, one deal of will pay for your marketing for a year. If you're borrowing money, one deal will pay for your interest. And then, you know, from there, from there on, you've got transactions that are just, uh, you know, cream on top. Uh, to finalize things, because I know we're, we're approaching an hour. I'm trying to keep this to an hour. Uh, so here's a homework. Come up with the four belief busters that you feel like you should be believing about your business in terms of yourself and your business. Uh, I gave you the one one that I've had for a long, long time and be begin to belief bust that. See what comes up. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow night. The second, I am or I have. Yeah, I am or I have at the beginning. And then secondly, so I want you guys to begin to tentatively, not finite, but tentatively write down some goals that you feel like you'd like to accomplish for next year. And then we're going to begin to hit those tomorrow night and we're going to finalize those tomorrow night and also come up with uh, a, an action plan moving forward. Because one thing that I really believe is, you know, once we set a goal, we have to immediately as fast as possible, begin to implement some type of plan moving forward towards that goal. So we're going to come up with all of that tonight. Anybody have anything to end with? Anybody have any thoughts, comments, concerns? Douglas, go ahead, man. Yeah, I had a little question about marketing. Um, would you recommend, uh, you know, for starters, for marketing, like, say, two to 3000 a month, maybe pay-per-click or something? I think if you can start with that, that's more than enough of a budget to do PPC, okay? okay. Most people, what they do is they do sweat marketing until they get a, a couple deals going, and then they take the profit from that deal or two 
and yeah. then go to a higher level marketing system. So l- let's do a call, Douglas, here maybe tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Uh, if you have some time, we'll jump on a call together and, and come awesome. up with okay, come up with a plan based on that. All right. So should I um send you a message or yeah, just email me. Email me, Brad at bradsmotherman.com and and I'll check my schedule here right after the call and we'll put something on the on the board. All right, great. Thank you. You bet, man. Keith, you're up. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Going back to are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose? You, you had the litmus test of uh, if you see marketing as a cost, you're playing not to lose. And I just wanted to uh, see if you could go one level deeper than that. I certainly don't see marketing as a cost. Um, however, I still am open to, to the idea that maybe I am playing not to lose. So is there a secondary question here? No, Keith. Um Frankly, whenever I said I've got some people in mind that are, are definitely playing to win, you were one of the people that came to my mind. Okay. I, I didn't really, not, I don't mean to be offensive in saying this, but I didn't really care what you think <laughs> of, what, of whether or not I'm playing to win or I want to I want to feel good about it myself. Because, you know, that, that question that I, that limiting belief, I guess, that I uh, had come up with earlier, I wrote this thing down like probably 15 or 16 times. I'm a powerful real estate investor and my success is assured. And that, that one question, but how long is it going to take? You know, that's, I'm really feeling that right now because I've been doing this for four years and albeit not even part-time, just as much as I can, uh, at nights and on the weekends, but still it's freaking like four years of me grinding my ass off and I have freaking nothing to show for it. And now, and I'm really frustrated. You can probably hear that in my voice. And, you bit. know, I'm frustrated where I am. And then knowing that, knowing that I got, I, I stepped away from a six-figure job. And I'm accepting that I'm in a negative cash flow state, yet I'm still putting money into marketing. So I know that I don't see marketing as a cost. But, like, I need to win right now. And I know that I need to play to win. And I'm fearful that I have some, I know that I have some limiting beliefs that I really want to go, I, I want to dig into this. And I know that we don't have time for this call. Maybe this is something for a, a future day, but I know that my mindset is holding me back from the success that I want. And I'm not in a place where I want success. I'm in a place where my family needs success. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, a couple of things on that. The, the first thing is, I think it's really, really good that you can take someone's opinion and say, well, it, it matters what I think. Like, that's really strong, like really strong. But I think it's also good to value other people's opinion that care about you because right. they may see something that you don't see. And w- what I see is that you're absolutely going to be a powerhouse. I think that you have a little bit of a tough time following a system without trying to make it better. And so, and we've talked about that, you know. Um, but that being said, man, I mean, I really am impressed with a lot of the things that you're doing and the things that, that you're working on. And I, dude, I, I feel a hundred percent confident about what you have going on. hundred percent. Okay. Thank you. Brad, even to echo kind of that note, I mean, you know, I think our exercise was really cool because it really does kind of expose, you know, some limiting beliefs, but, you know, um, also curious, you know, kind of like he said, you know, once we recognize the limiting belief, you know, now what, you know, then what, like, like, I guess for me, it's a little bit embarrassing, but what came to mind was, you know, I want other people to know that about me. I have a hard time believing me in me when others don't believe in me. And it's like, okay, huh. I did expose something that probably is some, what do, what do we do about that? I mean, you know, I'm really adamant about writing the goals down every day. You know, is it just as simple as, finding the opposite to my limiting belief and just writing that down over and over again? I mean, are, are your goals, and I keep looking at, at this, and I should be looking at that. Well, they're, they're there, but <clears throat> the face okay. is there, yeah. Are you in the system strong right now, and you're, you know, you're marketing, and you're you're getting your calls in, and are you going through the system at the same time? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm trying my best over here. Um, yeah, that's not a negative. I'm not I'm not um, I'm not pointing anything at you, buddy. That's not a negative thing at all. I think one of the most powerful things we do is we're able to talk openly about about what my struggle is. Yeah. For me, uh, the reason this stuff is so important for me is because I struggle so much with the fear of failure. And I, I don't you know, if I don't talk about it, 
if I don't have some people I can get it out there with, then it's just going to wind up being a conversation between me and me. And that thing won't go anywhere. I'm constantly every so often creating some new challenge to that fear of failure that causes me to have to overcome it. So, and I mean, I bet, I bet I've in the last just six years since, as it relates to real estate, as it, as it relates to investing, I bet I've been through this 14 or 15 times, multiple times a year of having to create a new challenge to overcome what I'm struggling with. And for me, that is the fear of what people think about me and how failure relates to that. And the interesting thing for me is I don't even have, most of the time, I lose sight of what I even think success is. Like, what is my end goal? What could happen in order for me to feel good about what I'm doing? Uh, For me to feel like that I'm reaching the goal that I'm looking for. What does that look like? And I lose sight of it because I'm constantly dealing with the fear of it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I will admit that I had an easier start than most investors have because I'm setting, I've had the opportunity to sit right here and go on, physically go on calls. But there was a time when Brad threw me out of the nest and basically said, you're going to have to do this on your own. I mean, as soon as that happened, then I was seized with fear again because I I had not done it by myself, but I did have the basic tools and those tools are everything. I'll just say for me, the best tool that I learned in all of it was not to give back my leverage. That when people are contacting me because they need my help, all of the motivation for this relationship is on their part, which means I have the leverage. When I don't stick to that script, I take the motivation onto me from them to me. And now I'm after them, which has now handed them my leverage. It's a swap that takes place. I, I have spent more time struggling with that than anything. And let, let me kind of jump in here. I mean, one of the things that I think is a, a really bad way to look at things is to assume that you should be fearless. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're not in some state of fear, then you're not growing, you know, because growth is really pushing you to a limit that you feel like you have. And that's going to be a a fearful moment regardless. So, I mean, for a, a significant minority of you guys, I know that you guys are in a state of fear because you haven't accomplished what you feel like you have to accomplish and you're, you're setting something up for yourself, you know, and that's exactly what it should be, you know, what courage is, is in the face of fear. If the fear didn't exist, courage wouldn't need to even be necessary, mm-hmm. you know? And so I've learned, well, I mean, uh, David Alexander has told me that, that I have an, an insane tolerance for chaos. And, and I've, you know, even you have said, you know, you're really fearless. And the first time that you told me that, I was like, really me? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm afraid all the time. You know, but I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because I know it works, you know, and we're going to keep pushing it because that's what I feel like I have to do. Does that kind of make sense, guys? Yeah, that makes sense. I actually wanted to tack on and uh, share something real quick just to kind of speak to some of the fear and uh, especially what Keith was sharing resonated with me. I was actually, I know he's in Hawaii. I was in Hawaii for seven and uh, all of the fear things that came up for me when I was writing down those statements was basically like, had um, been trying that in Hawaii for for years, and it was kind of this side hustle thing. And basically, nothing ever came of it, and I lost money, and it felt just like a huge whip of time. But something that I've been kind of keeping in perspective, I guess, make myself feel better about myself is while I know that I definitely want to reach success earlier in life, and I think it's definitely achievable. I kind of counter that that feeling of comparing myself to like Mark Zuckerberg and tech giants and people who achieved this tremendous success at such a young age. And I contrast that with people like the KFC guy, Mr. Sanders, you know, Benjamin Franklin, they, they didn't 
reach great success till they were after like 40, 50, 60 years old. And maybe that's a depressing note for, for some people who are like wanting to get there sooner, but this helps me keep trucking, knowing that I don't have to completely crush it, you know, every second in my early thirties and that it's going to come as long as I keep doing the right thing, the next like right step. Dude, that is 100% correct, man. So, I mean, it's the basics of, of compounding. You know, incremental improvements, even very small incremental improvements over time end up being massive over time, you know? And, you know, you take a penny and double it for 30 days. We've, we've all heard that. And it ends up being, what, $4 million, something like that. It, it's, it's amazing what can happen over time. But one thing that I see, and it's generally with the younger people, is that there's, there's less patience than with older people. Do you see that with the people that you work with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in general, I think patients can, and I get it, man, because when I was young, like I I wanted it right then too. And, you know, I still had a good, I mean, roughly four years before I began to scale to multiple states and, you know, really have something that, that was really worthwhile to have, you know? So, and and I'll, I'll, I'll also say this, the people that I see, that don't have a stable business or the people that had really, really fast success. And I I think it comes down to this because they never really learned the fundamentals of business and they never learned grit. So, and I I think I posted about this, it's been a a while, but if you take like a, a high school basketball player, that's just a pro level basketball player, but he's in high school and he's just blasting everybody on the court. He's a superstar. He gets an ego and all this but he never really learns to have a strong work ethic to learn the fundamentals. Then whenever he gets to college, he might be good, but he's not going to be what he could have been. And if he gets to the pros, he might be average, you know? And so having that really fast success to begin with can actually be a a negative. You know, I'm really, really happy that I started in, in 2010 when the market was complete chaos, when Bank of America was buying countrywide. <laughs> countrywide couldn't fund loans that they'd promised. I mean, we'd be at the closing table waiting on a wire. It would never come in 2009. And it was just, it was unbelievable chaos in the market. And what I found in that, even though I struggled at the beginning, was that owner financing always worked. You know, people were, foreclosures were all over the place. Foreclosures were rampant. It was really, really difficult to get a mortgage but this system worked. And so it was kind of trial by fire. And I'm really thankful looking back that I had the struggle that I had and I learned what I learned through that. Does that kind of make sense? So, and like I've said, a good plan executed over time well will always be successful. A good plan executed over time will always be successful. And we're proving that all over the place. So, yeah, and it's a, it's a journey. Like, I'm not going to run my belief busters this year and think up neat ways to challenge all those fears that I have. And next year, I won't have to deal with this anymore. Nope. There are there are deeper levels of it. There's new stuff that we're all confronted with. And so it is a journey. And, and I, I just I want to encourage you just to just to stay the course. Now, we all have to make decisions about where we are financially because we're all in different places financially. When I started this with Brad, I had a a business about 15 years ago, a perfectly good business that I ran into the ground and it left me $610,000 in unsecured debt. So it took me a long time. I think when when I started with you, I still had maybe another it was a lot. It's a lot. I don't know. It was, it was half of it at least. I was thinking 400. Yeah, so. around 400 that I had not paid back yet. It has just, and that's been six years ago. And it's just been this past year, the one that we're, we're finishing right now, early in it, that I paid off the last person. And um, so a lot of the money that I've made in the last six years has gone straight to other people's bank accounts. It's not been easy. Now that's patience guys. But if you'll just stay focused and sometimes things have to come back around, you might take a break for a little bit and then they come back around at another time. But I love what I see in 
20 something and 30 something and 40 something year olds right now, because you all have, you have skills and technology is a whole different way of living and doing business now that growing up, I mean, you know, if it wasn't on an eight track, then (laughs) I, I, I wouldn't listen to it. So don't be discouraged at all. Fear's not going anywhere, but having it work for me instead of me working for it is a place we want to get to. Amen to that. Anybody else have any thoughts, questions, concerns before we end for tonight? All right, guys. Appreciate you guys being with us. Really enjoyed it, man. That was that was strong. That was really good. So good. Um, see you guys tomorrow night, seven o'clock again. The homework, four things, belief busters that you want to see uh, yourself in your business in terms of beliefs that you should have about yourself and your business. Do the the belief busters for those, and then tentatively come up with a list of goals for your business and yourself uh, for twenty twenty one. Tentatively, not set in stone. Tentatively, then we're going to start hammering those down tomorrow night. We'll see you guys then. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.